Welcome back, another episode. You are correct if you assume that everyone seated at Celia Chun's table appeared to have already experienced it when Imogen stormed into the dining room and declared emphatically that Celia was her mother's star witness and that her mother was going to bring Collier Mills to heal. In order to show us what was happening on the rest of the ship while Imogen and Rufus were away on their 18-year-old memory field trip, vanishing turns the clock back one hour. You haven't seen anything yet if you thought the previous episode included some significant insights. We were coping with the blackout and Llewellyn Mather's suicide jump one hour ago. What a moment, ah. Uh. Teddy is finding it extremely difficult to comprehend what has transpired with her BDSM client in the aftermath, who appeared to have been more than that. Before taking his own life, Llewellyn wrote Teddy a note in which he assured her that this had nothing to do with her. While this is nice of him, it does little to ease Teddy's guilt. Teddy keeps playing back their previous exchange. When Llewellyn last visited his room, she was extremely inebriated and incredibly sentimental. He received a beautiful bottle of wine from someone, and he couldn't resist sipping the entire contents. He only wanted to talk about his feelings and lay his head on Teddy. Teddy, though, is gasping. She finds it hard to believe she missed the warnings. She doesn't understand Llewellyn's motivation for doing this. As she uses the supply closet to conceal her cries, she spends a brief period of time with Llewellyn and formulates a theory. An enraged Imogen tells Anna the news, and Anna loses her cool a little too. When she tells her parents, her father doesn't provide any consolation. He's a genuine dick about it, in fact. There's no empathy, not even the slightest trace of feeling. It's peculiar. Before you know it, Hilda and her people are investigating as the others wait out the blackout in the dining room. In relation to Hilda, she observes Lawrence Collier's indifference during the proceedings and eventually has the opportunity to question him about it in the dining room. He invited the folks here and chartered the boat, but he hasn't expressed any interest in the inquiry into the several killings that have taken place. Hilda replies, either you don't care or you already know, but Catherine Collier cuts her off as she swoops in to save her husband's ass once more. Sadly, or luckily, I suppose, because the Colliers truly appear to be awful people, Catherine is unable to save herself. Even her granddaughter Alina argues that Anna is still the greatest choice when the topic of who Celia should appoint as CEO of Collier Mills now that she owns the company arises. Celia doesn't agree. She says absent-mindedly, Larry isn't even her biological father, Anna isn't even a real Collier. Especially because Celia obtained that helpful piece of information from Father Toby, Catherine is powerless to refute it. The revelation that has shocked everyone in the room is not as shocking as discovering that Llewellyn Mathers, who passed away, is Anna's biological father. Catherine's marriage to Lawrence wasn't a loving one, and Llewellyn was upset at Kara's rejection. Ultimately, they found comfort in one another. Lawrence was never aware of the reality. Anna lashes out at her mother, who immediately returns it to her daughter. Catherine says Anna has nothing to be unhappy about. She ensured that her daughter would have a powerful and prosperous last name. Even if that realization is entertaining, it's even more satisfying to realize that this is the situation when Imogen enters and reveals the whole Celia was working with my mom to take down the Collier's stuff. That explains why everyone appears so devastated. Not to mention that Layla makes sure Anna and Alina are aware that she is aware of their relationship. There are a lot of things going on, and from this angle, Imogen's big moment lacks impact. If we had the time, it would be quite funny. When she comes across Lawrence outside on the deck, she makes her case to him. Lawrence would be another body on our ever-expanding list if appearances could murder. Then, though, an odd thing occurs, he becomes puzzled. He believes Kara to be Imogen. He says, thank God you're here. Without you, nothing functions. When Anna shows there, she informs Lawrence that he has early-onset dementia. Every day is not the same every day. That day when he gave the Chuns the lion's share of the business. That one wasn't good. He is unaware of what is happening. Which brings us to the more recent killings. I'm glad you inquired. Teddy and Hilda are chatting with the waiter who brought the wine to Llewellyn while Imogen is questioning Lawrence. It was Catherine Collier who gave him the wine. Could Catherine Collier be Victor Sams's real name? You are not mistaken if it seems like we are nearing the finish line right now. We now have four crew's bodies, and we have an additional unexpected visitor. Along with a gang of unidentified men, the man who was following Imogen and Sunil in Malta arrives by helicopter. Arrange the visitors, he commands. We have a game planned. Sounds wonderful. And horrifying. Did I also mention that there is a bomb on board that has enough power to sink the boat as a whole? Here, the stakes have increased dramatically. For more, subscribe.